Welcome back everyone, Houston Math Prep here, computing some inverse Laplace transforms using a table. We've got a sample Laplace transform chart, and we're just going to compute several inverse transforms for you. What we will do in this video to account for any constant multiples that are maybe off from our chart, we'll go ahead and turn what we have exactly into whatever's in the chart, and then we'll use the chart to do it. There are a couple of ways to do this. So here we've got the inverse transform of 5 over s. That looks a lot like 1 over s, except I have this 5 in here. I'm going to go ahead and bump the 5 out front. Remember, I can do that due to linearity. So we'll have 5 times the inverse transform of 1 over s once we've bumped the 5 out. And now we know the inverse transform of 1 over s is just 1. So we get 5 times 1, and we'll just get a function of t as 5, just a constant function there. Looking at our next one here, the inverse transform of 4 over s squared. We can tell this is, I think, the second row here. We've got t to the n, n factorial over s to the n plus 1. In this instance, the n actually needs to be 1 to make s square, so we're using this one here with n equal to 1. That means the top I'll need to be 1 factorial, also known as 1. So I'm going to go ahead and bump this 4 out front. So this will be equal to 4 times the inverse transform of just 1 over s squared. And so if I'm using this part of the chart with n equal 1, then that's just going to be 4 times t to the 1 if n is 1, and of course that's just going to be 4t. Looking at some more, we have the inverse transform of 8 over s cubed. So again, we'll be using this part here. In this case, n is going to be equal to 2. That will give us the s cubed. We'll need a 2 factorial on the top. 2 factorial is 2 times 1, which is just 2. So we need to make the top 2, and then we can use this. To make the top 2 here, since I have 8, I could just go ahead and bump out a factor of 4. And so that would give us 4 times the inverse transform of 2 over s cubed. And then we have our n equals 2, using our t to the n. So that would give us 4t squared. Looking at our next one, inverse transform of 3 over s to the 4. So we'll be using this one here again, but with s to the 4, that means we're going to be using n is equal to 3. We will need 3 factorial on the top. 3 factorial is 6. So what I'll do to make a 6 here, I will need to multiply inside by something, and then we'll also multiply outside by something. So to make 6 on the inside, I'll go ahead and multiply by 2. But now, so I don't change what I had originally, I'll need to do the opposite out here, which would be divide by 2 or multiply by a half. So we'll actually see this as 1 half times the inverse transform of 6 over s to the 4. Now this is our 3 factorial, and this is s to the 3 plus 1, so we'll be using this with n equal to 3. And here we'll get 1 half t cubed. Our next one, inverse transform of 7 over s minus 3. So we'll be using e to the a t here. In this case, a is equal to 3 in this one. I'll go ahead and bump my 7 out since in my formula I have a 1. So we'll say that's going to be equal to 7 times the inverse transform of 1 over s minus 3. And of course, with a equals 3, that gives us 7 times e to the 3t. For our next one here, 7 over 3s plus 1. Now, this is using the same thing here, only we don't have just a single multiple of s in the front. So what we'll need to do first, I think, is bump out not only the 7, but I also want to bump out the 3, so I just have s plus or minus something so I can see how it fits s minus a. So we'll bump the 7 out from the top. And I'm going to also factor out a 3 in the denominator. So we'll get 7 over 3 inverse transform of 1 over s plus. Now if we have factored out 3 from the bottom, we also had to factor it out of the 1. So we would actually be left with a 1 third. So this is going to fit our 1 over s minus a. In this case, now you can actually see a is actually going to be negative 1 third. So here we'll get 7 thirds e to the negative t over 3. 
Looking at our next two here, you can see they're similar. We have an s squared plus something here. We have an s squared plus something here. One of them has an s on the top, the other doesn't. The one that has just a constant on the top is going to fit our sine of kt. This top one up here, we'll do this first, has an s on the top, so that's going to fit our cosine of kt. Let me go ahead and bump out my 3 first. So we'll think of this as 3 times the inverse transform of s over s squared plus 5. And now I can use my cosine of kt here, and I just need to figure out what my k is. If this is 5 and that's k squared, then we know that k is actually going to be the square root of 5. So using our cosine of kt, this will become 3 times the cosine of square root 5t. Looking at our next one here, 1 over s squared plus 7, you can see we actually need k over s squared plus k squared. So when I look at this one, I can already see that k is equal to the square root of 7. The problem is I don't have square root of 7 on the top to fit my formula, so I need to create a square root 7. The way we'll do that is to multiply a square root 7 into the top, so we'll say root 7 on top, but now we can't just change it without making sure it stays the same. So because I multiplied on top by a square root 7, I'll also multiply on the bottom, or divide by, a square root 7 out front. Now we can go ahead and use our sine formula here. So this will be 1 over square root 7 sine of square root 7 t. For our next one here, inverse transform of 4s plus 2 all over s squared plus 9. This doesn't actually fit the sine or the cosine by itself because we have not only a term that has an s, but we also have a constant term. So what we'll do is actually split this up into two separate terms. We'll think of the inverse transform of 4s over s squared plus 9 plus 2 over s squared plus 9 and we'll do each of these separately. So we'll go ahead and think of the first one. We'll bump out the 4. That will make it just like the cosine kt formula. So we'll say 4 times the inverse transform of s over s squared plus 9 plus, and now here for the sine of kt, where we just have a constant on top, I need this k to match the k squared here. In this case, we can see, I think, k is equal to 3. So we'll need to create a 3 here, and then this is our 3 squared. So we'll actually have the inverse transform of, let's change this up a bit, so I'll leave the 2 for now. Let's go ahead and think about what would I need to do to 2 to make it 3. Well, I'd need to reduce the 2, so divide by 2, and I'd need to put a 3 in its place, so multiply by 3, right? That would get rid of the 2 and put a 3 in its place. Now I need to do the opposite of multiply by 3 halves, which would be to multiply by the reciprocal out front. So I actually need to multiply by 2 thirds to balance out the multiply by 3 halves inside. Now we can go ahead and use our chart to do these. So this will be 4 times our cosine of kt with k equal to 3, so that will be cosine of 3t, plus 2 thirds, and then this will be the sine formula with k equal to 3, so we'll have sine of 3t. For our last two here, we've got similar looking things. We've got 2s over s squared minus 3 and 2 over s squared minus 9. So we've got s over s squared minus k squared and constant over s squared minus k squared. So we're going to be using hyperbolic sine and hyperbolic cosine, the cinch and cosh functions to do this. Let's look at the first one. This one has an s on the top. So this one fits the cosh function. We'll go ahead and bump our 2 out front. That will be 2 times the inverse transform of s over s squared minus 3. Now using our formula, here we can see that k is going to equal the square root of 3. And so using our formula, we'll get 2 hyperbolic cosine or cosh of square root 3t. For our last one here, 2 over s squared minus 9, you can see that fits the cinch kt. And this right here is telling us that k is equal to 3. Now in the cinch kt formula, k is on top, and 2 
is not k. k is supposed to be 3. So we're going to adjust our 2 into a 3 the same way we did on the last page. I need to replace my 2 with a 3. So I will divide by 2 on the top and multiply by 3. So I'm multiplying by 3 halves. That means I'm going to need to multiply by 2 thirds on the outside to balance out the fact that I am reducing the 2 and turning it into a 3 there. So we'll get 3 over s squared minus 9 now like we need inside. We can go ahead and say that that is then 2 thirds cinch of 3t. All right, everyone, hopefully this helps you with some practice on doing inverse Laplace transforms from a table, doing some basic inverse transforms. Coming up in our next video, we're doing inverse transforms using partial fractions. We'll see you in the next video.